Check the diary of any tourist on Earth, and you will surely come across the name Capri. Capri, an island in the Bay of Naples, is known for its rough environment, luxurious hotels, nightlife and shopping, including everything from designer clothes to limoncello and handcrafted leather shoes. The Blue Grotto, an underground tunnel where the sea shines bright blue as a reaction of sunlight entering through an underwater tunnel, is one of its most well-known natural attractions. Capri's stunning, cove-studded coastline attracts many yachts in the summer. The grotto is a huge, submerged cavern with a sea entrance. The cave appears to be lighted inside with an odd, intense blue glare due to mirrored sunlight. Small boats meet outside the cave's mouth to transport people into the cave through a narrow aperture that is barely a meter high. You may have to lay down on the boat's floor to get through, and it is hard to enter when the weather is stormy. It was formerly supposed to be the abode of sea nymphs by the Romans, but it has been Capri's main tourist destination since the 19th century. Take a boat from Marina Grande, a bus from Anna Capri, or the Via Pagliaro, three kilometers from Anna Capri to reach the Blue Grano. Other stunning sea caves where the light shines the strong hues of the Mediterranean exist. The Green Grotto, on the flip side of the island, is shorter but more accessible by boats and less busy. Take a two-hour stroll down the craggy western shore of Capri Sentira dei Fortini Borbonisai to experience the island's adventurous side and get away from the tourists. Between the Blue Grotto and the Pundacarna Lighthouse, Faro di Pundacarna, the walk displays a series of historic castles along with some of the Capri's most stunning and never-seen panoramas. The walk between the Blue Grotto and the Pundacarna follows the uneven shoreline, passing three forts erected in the early 1800s to defend Capri's coastline. The English erected the forts of Orico, Misola, and Pino, which the French later expanded after conquering Capri in 1808. Take plenty of drinks and use durable boots and a hat when walking through the thin Mediterranean vegetation. As there is minimal shade, the climb takes around two hours, and you may chill off at the little sand at the base of the rocks below the lighthouse if you start at the Blue Grotto end. Among the favorite things of tourists to do in Capri is enjoy the view of the eye-catching sunset from the lighthouse. It's going to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. From Anna Capri, you may take a bus to either side of the walk. Hiking the calm walks of the Capri Philosophical Park towards the ending of the Midliera hiking route is among the best things to do at Anna Capri. Each of the three roads leading up the hillside has a distinct philosophical topic, optimism, realism, and insight, and is decorated with ceramic plates citing thinkers and authors from the 7th to the 20th century. Even if you don't want to consider life's big problems or meditate on the knowledge of the centuries, a walk down the Via Migliera, which runs from Piazza del Pace past farms and farms to the breathtaking views from the Belvedere della Migliara, is a great way to observe the Capri landscape. In Capri, swimming or at a beach on a sunny day is a unique experience. This island is more regulated than a huge, barren length of beach, where you may throw your towels anywhere. Groups of lounges and umbrellas lie in picture-perfect numbers on the very few tiny beach bays. These beach resort clubs generally offer booked-in-advance lounging areas, changing rooms, and a kitchen. If you're on a tight budget, go to Marina Piccola, where there are three little beach sections where you may share pebble patches with locals for free. On the peninsula of Capri, there are two different settlements. Capri Town, with its well-known landmarks such as the Piazzetta, Marina Piccola, and the famed retail areas attracts most visitors. But on the other side of the island, there is another world just a quick train or bus journey away. Anna Capri is more suburban and is where you can ride the chairlift to the summit of Monte Solero. The docks of Marina Grande's unique private harbor clog up every summer with stunning and expensive yachts of celebrities worldwide. Marina Piccola, on the other side of the peninsula, is home to some of the world's most costly yachts. Since Hedy led Dolce Vita's years of the late 1950s, when stars like Jacqueline Kennedy on Assis, Elizabeth Taylor, and Sophia Loren placed the island on the jet set map, Capri has been a star studded hotspot. Today, you may witness Bayance's boat, Valentino's morning coffee, or Lenny Kravitz doing a brief performance at a bar. What's the plan for the evening? 
almost every group of tourists asks each other this question daily. This is the usual question offered at a cocktail reception in the Piazzetta. When everybody is sitting all around outdoor seating, sipping in the final moments during the day before night, a lazy midday routine that encourages tourists to Capri to slow down to meet the island's sluggish pace. The masses eventually go on to supper after a few cocktails. The island's clubs only start to fill up about midnight. Among these regional attractions on Capri are the so-called tavern, such as Anema E. Cor, where live musicians lead the audience in singing and dancing to the beat of Tarantella or Neapolitan classics. Among the first things you notice on your trip to Capri is this gigantic rock structure, which comprises three different limestone piles. The rocks of Ferraglione are so huge that they can be seen from the Amalfi Coast cities of Positano and Preano on a sunny day. The loveliest views are from the picturesque viewpoint at the end of Trajara and the flower-filled Augustus Garden. That's all for today. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.